What's going on everyone? It's Phil from Earth Nails and Tails where it's our goal to grow the gardener in you. And today we're going to be doing that by showing you how we just completely built our DIY rain water collection system, which allows us to capture and hold over 800 gallons of fresh rainwater, which we're going to be using to strictly water our garden. This is a huge upgrade for our property. So I'm really excited to get into the details and show you all exactly how we built this system and how it's going to be supplying rainwater to our garden. When I was originally designing the system, I obviously had my garden in mind. The whole purpose of me creating this system was to water my garden. And we get quite a bit of rain here in coastal Virginia, but there are some weeks where we don't get enough rain and the garden definitely suffers, especially for our more needy plants like our peppers and tomatoes. So I wanted to ensure that I had enough water all the time to water my garden. So I designed the system to collect and store a week and a half's worth of water in order to water my whole property or my whole garden. So we have over 800 gallons of water here. And I like to use the rule of thumb, one gallon per square foot per every single week. In order to accomplish that, I picked up three IBC totes and they're under these covers right here. We'll talk about these covers in a little bit, but these are these plastic totes, food grade totes, which I was able to find on Facebook Marketplace. Now you can find these everywhere. For some areas, it's probably gonna be a little bit harder than others, but you can also get them brand new from your farming stores. I was able to pick up these three IBC totes, which each hold 275 gallons of water for 400 bucks. I commonly see them online for $125 a piece, but if you get them brand new, they can cost upwards of hundreds of dollars. Regardless of where you get them from, make sure they are food grade and you really need to understand what was in them before you're going to apply it to hold water in order to feed your garden. These three totes either had vitamin C or bentonite clay in them. So all I did was rinse it out and I'm actually filling these totes up all the way and I'm gonna completely flush them before I allow any of that water to go to the garden. But the first thing that you really need to consider is how much water do you need or how much water do you need to store for your application? All of this water is strictly for watering my garden. None of this is potable water. I'm not gonna be drinking any of this water. It's all going to be used for my garden. Once I had the totes, the very first thing I needed to do was find a good location. And it needs to be convenient to collect your rainwater and also convenient to water the garden. So I found a nice spot and it actually wound up working well right next to my deck here. Eventually I'm gonna be putting a countertop on this whole thing and making a bar so it's gotten multiple uses but what you want to ensure that you're doing is leveling the whole ground that your IBC's totes are going to sit on because the goal is going to be to connect them all together so that way as one of the IBC totes fills up the other two are going to be filling up equally and we're going to explain how that's going to happen later on. So what I did was found the lowest part of my yard. And for that, it was this IBC tote right here. And then I went ahead and put it on a cinder block foundation. So I really took the time. This is arguably the most important step when you're setting up the system is laying your cinder blocks down, digging into the soil as needed in order to get this whole system level. Now, if you look across the top of the IBC totes here, they're all relatively level. So as this first one fills up, the level is gonna be equal across every single IBC tote. This is going to allow you to capture as much rainwater as you possibly can. After I got all the IBC totes leveled and put into place, that's when I started hooking up the plumbing. And honestly, the most annoying thing for me on this project was getting all of these different styled connectors in order to adapt the fittings on the IBC totes to two inch PVC, which is what you're going to commonly find in your big box stores in order to complete this setup. I have the links to all of the different connectors that I used in the video's description below, so go check them out. But I had to use three different types of connectors, one for each tote. So on the first IBC tote right here, 
I was able to thread this one right onto two inch PVC, which made it really simple. So I've got a two inch threaded PVC connection, and then I just tied that right into a two inch T. On our next IBC tote, we have this bulkhead fitting, which allows you to strap on right to the IBC tote, which then has a threaded connection, which allows you to thread on to two inch PVC. And then it's the exact same connection as the first IBC tote. And on the last IBC tote, we have a larger threaded fitting. Now this one had some pretty large threads on here. So I had to find this adapter basically by measuring the diameter of the threads. And then if you look at the threads, you're gonna measure from the peak of each pitch. And typically you'll find these measurements in millimeters when you go to look for this. But again, I have all of these fittings down in the video, video's description, so it should be easy to find. Just recognize that depending on which IBC totes you're able to find, they might have different connections that you're going to have to get in order to fit this properly up to two inch PVC. But at the end of the day, they're all connecting to this two inch threaded PVC which then allows me to connect it to the rest of the system. So now that we have all of our IBC totes plumbed in order to mate up to two inch PVC, you've probably noticed how I have this clear tubing that's connecting all of my IBC totes together. The reason why I did this is because I expect these three totes to settle to some degree on their own platform. You could see that I have the cinder block set up. We did the best that we could to get them level, but after they get full, with 275 gallons of water each, that's a couple tons of water. So there's a lot of weight sitting on here. So I'm expecting each one of them to settle individually. What this allows is for the totes to settle and it's not gonna put a lot of stress on these connections. If I hard piped this all together, it would put a lot of stress in these joints here and then you're probably gonna develop a lot of leaks or even crack your PVC. So that prevents that from occurring. Additionally, I can now take apart all of these connections for the winter time, completely drain the system. So I'm not worried about the system freezing and again, breaking and causing me to have to replace everything. And I think another great reason to have this clear PVC tubing and that's flexible is that I can physically see the water inside of it. So I could see, physically see how clean this is I don't have any dirt or debris settling in here. And if I did, it would tell me that other parts of my system aren't working as expected. One thing you've probably noticed on these IBC totes is these black covers. And one of the important things is you want to keep your water as clean as possible. And we do that through a variety of filters, which we're gonna talk about, but you also do that by preventing any bugs or organisms from living or growing inside of these containers. So the black covers, keep the algae from growing on the inside, as well as prevent any mosquitoes from getting in and harvesting their nests in here. So one thing that you want to do is have these PVCs open or these IBC totes open. So that way, as the water flows in, you're allowing that water to expand all the way up and you're not gonna cause the pressure to build up inside the tote. So I have this opening here, which allows the air to flow in and out but then I have this cover on top, which prevents any bugs from getting inside. So now that we understand the general setup of the IBC totes themselves, let's get into the piping and talk about how the system's actually collecting the rainwater. So all of this tubing here, and it's made up of two inch and three inch PVC is what us, allows us to collect the rainwater from the roof itself. What we have here is a few different types of filters that allow us to collect this rainwater and keep it as clean as possible. This first one here, I was able to find on Amazon and I'll also link it to it in the description. But this allows me to remove this right here, which is gonna catch any large sediment that falls off of the roof and into the gutter. So I can easily take this off, clean it, and put it back on, and then we're ready to go. And you could see me putting it on here. This system is relatively flexible, so I could take it apart as needed to clean it or do any maintenance on it. And then what happens here is the water initially flows from this filter into what is called the first flush or a sediment trap. 
So all of the debris that's on the roof, you don't want it to go inside of your IBC totes because then it's gonna contaminate the water. So this long tube here is three inch PVC, which ties into this filter. This is all sealed up with PVC cement. And basically the first amount of rainfall that you get is most likely going to be the water that flushes all the debris off the roof. All of that is gonna fall into this tube and then this tube is going to have to completely fill up before any of the water flows over this connection and into the IBC totes. So this right here should catch most of the debris. And I have a trap on here. So I'm actually gonna take this off right now. I've got my channel locks. And what you want to do after every time it rains, and we just got some rain yesterday and the day before. So every time it rains the next day, you wanna come out here and you wanna open this up because if you don't, drain all of the water out of here this whole column is going to be full of water and then any new sediment that comes in is going to basically stay in line with that flow of water and immediately go into your ibc totes so coming out here and draining this is actually really important so i'm just gonna take this off and this is good because we're gonna see how well this actually works one is there a lot of sediment on our roof but two is this actually doing its job so we've got a little bit of sediment that's trapped in here and that's exactly why you wanna drain this out. But that's good, that means this is doing its job. It has some sediment buildup in here, but not very much. So we know that this system is at least working for its function. So now that the water, let's say it's raining, this whole tube has completely filled up and now it's starting to flow over into our IBC tote. I know that there might be some sediment that is going to come over in that flow of water, especially if you're getting a heavy rain. So what I did was added another fine filter, come on a little bit closer to this right here, where you could see, look at all that fine sediment in there. And I mean, this filter is very, very fine, a fine nylon mesh filter. And I mean, this is the type of sediment that it's catching. Look how fine that is. So you always want to clean or keep your water inside of your IBC tote as clean as possible. So having these multiple stages of filters and sediment traps is what is going to allow you to do that. So you really got to stay on top of these things and make sure that they stay clean. Because if you allow this stuff, especially if you have an asphalt roof like I do, you don't want that stuff, that tar roof, sitting inside of your rain barrel and sitting in the water and contaminating your water that you're going to be feeding your plants with. If you can filter that stuff out to the maximum extent practicable, you're gonna keep your water as clean as you possibly can. So now that we have our water flowing into our tanks here, we need to ensure that we're protecting the system. And I talked about it a little bit before in regards to pressure building up in the tank. If you just had that lid sealed on tight and you had that water building up, eventually it would fill up and then start gushing out the top here and we don't want that to happen so what you do is install an overflow which is what we have on this tubing right here so essentially once the water gets up to this level and if i were to take this off you would see that the level of this right here is just below the top of my ibc tote here so basically once the water level meets this it'll flow over and it will begin to drain out so that way we don't overflow our tanks so now that you understand how the system is actually collecting the rainwater, you're probably wondering, how does the water get transferred from the first IBC tote to the two others? So I'm gonna hop back in my hole here and do my best to explain exactly how water likes to flow. And that's exactly why we leveled these IBC totes out in the beginning. Since all of these IBC totes are connected together, as this one fills up, water is going to want to find its level. So since all of these valves are open and all these IBC totes are connected together, as this tank fills up, it's going to flow through all these tubes. As you can see, they're full of water and they're all going to fill up at the exact same rate. That's why making sure all of these tanks are completely level to one another is so important. Because if you have one that's significantly higher than the other, Whichever one is the lowest is going to limit the amount of water that you can actually collect in the system. If this tote over here is significantly lower than this tote, once this tote gets to maximum level, 
the water is going to be coming out of the top of this tote before this one can even get completely filled. So again, you want to make sure that you're completely leveling the system out before you do any of the plumbing or do anything further to install your rainwater collection system. The last thing I want to talk about is how we're supplying the garden with our IBC totes here. And all of my totes, again, are connected together and I've got them down to this one supply valve right here. So this is a big beefy two inch isolation valve. And let's just open it up just to see how this water is flowing. And it, look, it looks pretty good right there. I'm really happy with that result so far. There's obviously not a lot of sediment that's going into the tank, which is exactly what you want. Eventually, I'm going to be hooking the system up so it's going to be supplying the drip irrigation system of my garden. And I have a pump that I was able to get through Vivor, which is going to be able to take this water and I'll plug it into the pump and I'll be able to turn that pump on and water my garden just using these IBC totes with no further pressure required. In the future, I'll probably be coming up with different ways in order to actually transmit this water to different places. I would really like to make some sort of header here and be able to supply it to various places in my garden and really figure out the best way possible in order to water my garden. Maybe it is strictly through gravity. You could definitely plumb this up in a way where you're gravity feeding the drip irrigation system of your garden. There's a bunch of different ways that you could do that. So I'm not really going to get into much more detail in regards to it. But I just wanted to show you the end result of collecting rainwater from your roof, storing it in the IBC totes, and then at the end, the whole purpose of it is supplying fresh rainwater in order to water your garden. All right, well, that's gonna sum things up for today's video, and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel if you're looking for more homesteading and gardening videos like this, and make sure you hit that notification button so every time we release a new video, you're immediately notified and you can start watching on our channel. This one, again, is a fantastic addition to our homestead. I'm so excited to be able to have this and be able to water my garden strictly with rainwater. And I know a lot of you are probably gonna have some questions. So if you do, make sure you leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them or maybe even provide a follow-up video to clarify anything in this process. Again, my name is Phil from Earth Nails and Tails and I can't wait to see you in the next video.